Welcome to a little bit of Lab Rat Fun Networking with Fish. What we're going to go ahead and do today in our next APKM IWAN app version 1.10 YouTube is we're going to go ahead and use our traffic. So we're going to have branch 3. Um, so we're going to have bidirectional traffic using Aspirant Test Center that's going between branch 3 and data center 1. I'm going to mark the traffic with DSCP EF in both directions. I'm going to go ahead and cause impairment between branch 3 and the MPLS cloud. That's going to be branch 3 and the MPLS cloud here. And then we're going to see how the traffic moves over to the backup channel. So what we're going to do is, again, I'm going to send traffic. It's going to actually be from, whoops, the daisy over here in branch 3. And it's going to go, and it's going to want to go over to 10.101.114, which is up here in the 10.101 data center. So data center 1 is 10.101. Data center 2 is 10.102. I'm trying to go to the 10.101 data center. So let's go ahead and see how this looks. So what I have is I actually have a Spirant traffic generator. This is a Spirant traffic generator. And it is sending 100 frames per second. You can see that if I stop the traffic right here, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to click Stop. So I can click this, and I can go ahead and say I want you to start. So what you'll see is from branch 3, so from branch 3, we are generating 100 frames per second. This 100 frames per second that's being generated on branch 3 is going up and being received on data center 1. So let's just go ahead and start both of them. And let's look a little bit deeper at what I'm actually sending here. So this tag EF actually means nothing. It's just a name. So here's the branch. The branch is 10.14.0.66. And because 10.14 is our LAN interface, if you remember from the second IWAN app YouTube. And it's going to 10.101.114. 10.101, again, is data center 1. We're sending 100 frames per second, and I'm doing a range that is in the UDP port range. Let's go ahead and edit this. You can see the diff serve actually in hex is Baker 8. It gets a little bit confusing. I know I'm saying EF. But if we actually look at the frame uh, right here on the diff serve, I'm doing actually code point EF, which is 46, which the Spirant goes ahead and does the whole QoS byte. So that is B8 as far as the whole QoS byte is concerned. But it's still EF as far as we're concerned. So the doing UDP, and I'm also doing RTP. I am increasing the sequence number so that I am acting more like a um, actual application. So that is the Spirant test center. We're sending 100 frames per second. And let's go ahead and hop over to our um, IWAN app. So this is the IWAN app. And you recall this is where we had it before. We have it as three provisioned. So we have the two hubs. We have the main hub, which is data center one. And we have the transit hub, which is data center two. And we also have Florida. So let's go ahead and go to our live action. So what I did was I created a data center one. I created a data center two. And so here's data center one. This is the um, pop for the MPLS. This is the INET. This is pop, what I call pop two, or data center two. This is the MPLS. This is the INET. And this is branch three. Now, live action is, in my opinion, like a net flow nine collector on steroids, but it does a lot more stuff than that. So if you're familiar with live action, I can either go ahead and use a filter that I have up here. So we could go ahead and go to EF, because I did a filter before. And this is, tell me everything that's happening right now that has EF in it. But I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I know the IP address, so flow.ip equals 10.101.114.66. This is the IP address of my Spirant traffic generator up at the Data Center 1 head end. And so as you can see, if we zoom in, the traffic is actually going over from here. So where is here? So if we actually go in here and zoom in a little bit more, 
It's coming from 10101.2. Who is 10101.2? So if we look, 10101.2 is actually the switch, well, layer three switch. Um, so 10101.2, so we're going out here because the traffic is actually coming from right here. So 10101.114 lives right down here. It's gonna to come to this router. It's EIGRP peered to POP1 MPLS and POP1 INET. And so it's coming from there, it's going in, and it's going from the gigabit interface, gigabit 000. And again, if we come over here, this is actually gigabit 000. And it's coming into IWAN2 POP1 MPLS, and then it's going out tunnel 10. When it goes out tunnel 10, this is the DMVPN IWAN tunnel and the whole thing that the IWAN app built for us. So it came up with certain IP addresses, so it came up with these IP addresses, so this is tunnel 10. And at the branch site, let's go ahead and clear this up a little bit. So I'm gonna clean this up just a little bit over here. And so if we look, this is other, so we'll move that over here. And you can see right here that this is actually tunnel 10. So the traffic is coming from POP1 MPLS. It's coming down here into the cloud. It's going into branch three, tunnel 10, which is the other side of it. And then as we can see from the arrows, it's coming down and it's going out to my spirant traffic generator. So this is basically showing you that, whoops, the daisy. This is showing you that this is actually going out the MPLS world. Now, if we zoomed in a little bit more, here's our POP2, our POP1 INET. So if we look at our POP1 INET, here's tunnel 11. So tunnel 11 is the INET or the public facing side. And if we come over here, here is tunnel 11. You can even see that tunnel 11 is there because there we go. So this is tunnel 11 right here. So here's the interesting thing. So with IWAN, we can see that the traffic is actually going into branch three. It's going out over the MPLS and up. Now, what were we, what were we gonna do next? What we were gonna go ahead and do next was we're going to go ahead and see that we've got this primary channel here. Now I told you there's gonna be a backup channel. Now why is there gonna be a backup channel? Because with IWAN or Intelligent Wide Area Networking, what we wanna do is this EF traffic is business critical to us. So we wanna make sure that we protect it. So it's picking the MPLS path, which is perfectly fine with us, but from an Intelligent Wide Area Networking decision, what about the IWAN app said that this traffic should go over the MPLS as opposed to the INET? So let's go ahead and go into the IWAN app. I'm gonna go over to administer application policy because that's actually what's happening. So what I did was I actually created an application just like that. I called it DSCP EF. Uh, value 46, I said what category it should be. When I said what category or what category type it should be or what type of application it's similar to, it will actually go ahead and pre-populate <clears throat> settings that are probably similar to those settings. Now you don't have to keep them, you could change them, but I didn't. So, and then I went ahead and I moved that over into voice and video. Now if we come over here and we say, okay, well what's voice and video supposed to be doing? Well, if we look at voice and video, voice and video is supposed to be having a path preference that it should be preferring MPLS. And if we exceed one of those thresholds, then that is brown out for that threshold and for that application or what we call that traffic class. And we can go ahead and move over to the INET. So what we're gonna do next is we are going to go ahead and cause impairment. But let's go back to the Spirant Test Center that I'm using. So here's the Spirant Test Center. Again, I'm sending 100 frames per second. This is gonna be pretty consistent. As you see, I've dropped no frames and I have reordered no frames. Why is that important? You will see. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and cause delay. Um, when I usually do this for people, most of the people ask do delay. Uh, not lost, not too sure why, but we're gonna go ahead and do delay. So we're going to cause delay right here. So we're gonna cause impairment between the branch three router and the MPLS cloud. 
we're, we're going to go ahead and do is go in and cause a delay on that. So let's go ahead and go back over to here. And I actually have to switch over to my other environment. So this is a WAN bridge. And as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and since we gave everybody lots of bandwidth, and we're going to say we want uh, delay. So let's go ahead and say we want 300 delay. And I want no loss. So I'm going to hit Control Alt to get out of this. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back over to where my Spirant Test Center is. So we just see that it switched over right now, OK? How do we see that? Because of reordered frames. So let's come over and look at that. So let's go ahead and go over to here. So let's go ahead and go over here. So what we see is that our traffic has actually moved over from MPLS over to INET. So we've gone RTP audio EF, that's the traffic that I'm running, and it moved over to the INET. So what you might be asking yourself is why were there reordered packets? Well, let's think about that, right? The traffic was going out here, and it was going up here and down here. And then IWAN, notice that there was impairment here because of the delay. But we still sent the traffic over here, and then we switched over to the backup channel. And when we switched over to the backup channel, what we did was this traffic actually made it here faster because I have like no delay over here on this backup channel at all. So what you actually see is that no traffic was dropped, but some traffic was reordered, about a third of a second work worth since I'm running 100 frames per second. And let's go over to live action and see what live action says. So if we do a refresh here, and voila, we are over on the internet. And that's it. So what you saw, we just saw branch three and data center one. So traffic from the Spiron traffic generator going from here to here, talking to each other. We saw that in the Spiron uh, test center, we saw live action confirm that we were going over the MPLS as our primary channel. We had a backup channel, just like IWAN always has a backup channel going there so that it control your business critical traffic. We saw that the IWAN app had it as MPLS is the preferred, INET as the backup. Should we actually have a threshold crossing event that moves us over to there? We cause a threshold crossing event by causing delay right here, impairment between this branch and its MPLS cloud. And we saw the traffic go ahead and move over to the backup channel. And we had out of order packets for probably about a third of a second and no loss. And now your business critical traffic is avoiding the brownout impairment on the MPLS and you have moved over to the backup channel. Hope you had a lot of fun playing the lab networking with fish. Have a great day.